Hi, welcome to Photography Travel Log. Today we're going to talk about defining your goals for travel photography. Hi everyone, we'd like to welcome you to Photography Travel Log, and it's a new show and we're sponsored by Photographers Adventure Club and also Parkwood Studios and we're here in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, I'm Sprague, your host, and uh, I'm uh, joined today with uh, Larry and with Lisa. And today we're going to talk about some uh, various aspects of getting the most out of your photography when you travel. And we want to start out by talking about, first of all, what your goals are for taking these particular pictures. Uh, a lot of people will get into travel photography thinking, that they want to take pictures, say, for National Geographic and make a lot of money, and uh, that's what they're going to uh, be shooting for because, let's face it, when you first get your camera, you think, wow, this is good, I must be good, so, you know, this is where I'm going. But sometimes um, you might want to expand on that just a little bit. Some of these, um, some people are going to be, um, I think, looking more at personal types of photography, and some are going to be looking more at professional types of photography. I'm a personally a personal photographer. I'm an airline pilot by avocation, and uh, Larry and Lisa are both professional photographers. Uh, Larry does uh, product photography as his primary, and Lisa is a wildlife photographer, and uh, they both use travel in their uh, various lines of work. So uh, to start out with, um, let's talk a little bit about uh, personal projects, I think, and uh, uh, to start out with, um, I think we take pictures, say, for clubs, uh, personal projects for family. Can you describe a little bit of the type of things that you like to do? Hey, you want to go first? Yeah. Have you... <laughs> I'll dive in there. All right, ladies first. Yeah. So yeah, for me, so I do certainly personal projects and also, um, you know, and especially with travel photography, even though I'm a wildlife photographer, I have a whole alter ego as a street portraiture person. So when I'm on the road, my personal projects are meeting random people and then getting to know them and approaching them, which is a technique all to itself. And then getting to the point where you're comfortable with them and then photographing them. And I've had some amazing experiences. Serendipity plays a lot into it. And I've been able to uh, literally have whole portfolios. And in one case, I actually helped prevent someone from committing suicide unknowingly. So, you know, for me, whether or not you sell those images, which in some cases I have definitely sold them for restaurants and publications, but, um, it's a personal project. I really enjoy getting to know people when I'm traveling and I often travel alone. So I'm open to get to know those people. Yeah. Well, you know, I started out as a landscape photographer and as a kid, I was hiking a lot and I still do a lot of that, but that uh, process of, you know, kind of led me to become a product photographer that keeps me cooped up in a studio. So I still, as a personal project, I like getting out and doing photography at night and days and get into the backcountry. It's a lot of fun. Usually get to go with a group of really fun photographers. But in that process, uh, you know, I have had some images picked up. You know, I wasn't purposely trying to sell them, but uh, I don't know if we want to talk about that at this point. But uh, that was the process of tagging your you know images on you know Flickr. I say you're up mm -hmm. about 500 pics. There's a lot of different. I mean, there's hundreds of sites, but got to choose. I can't do them all. I properly tagged those images and uh, National Geographic found me and asked if they could use a particular image. So if you are doing stuff, and even if you're doing it as an amateur, you know, tag it well, and you might get be surprised who sees it uh, just by searching the web and things. Like that. Right. Now, if you look at taking your pictures to a magazine or a publication, I mean, how do you actually go and approach something like that? I mean, is, is there an editor you talk to, and how do you determine whether it's a paid shoot or whether it's... Uh, um, something that you're doing for a photo credit or something like that? I mean, a lot of times I've just been asked by magazines if they could use photos, so I haven't specifically gone out and tried to shoot for specific magazines, except for a handful that you know asked if they could do things for credit and you know put my name out there. So in, early on, I think a lot of people do that. You do things to get a lot of pat on the back, get your name out there. But at some point, you have to make that transition to say, you know, my... Uh, work is valuable enough and start find out what the market is for that particular genre because it's very different from a, a major magazine to a small local publication and things so I think you need to do your research now there's no flat uh, amp pat answer to that you know for a number right. I can give you yeah. right yeah and in my case you know I've been published in major, major magazine and it is about them finding the images sometimes yep. and it's also about getting on their secret list you know they have an email list that many magazines will use yeah. for mm -hmm. photographers that they 
like, and it's about asking to get on that list or getting noticed and go. then asking, and then quarterly or however often you'll get an email with the shot list of the things that they need, and then you submit and commit, uh, compete against the other photographers who are submitting with those same uh, categories of images, and hopefully you'll get published. I think it probably takes some perseverance, too. Yes, it, it, it does. Tenacity, because a lot of people probably ask, you yes, know. Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Now, have magazines ever contacted you to ask you to go out on an assignment, say, and they've uh, actually paid for your travel and um, paid you a salary while you were gone and asked you to shoot certain, uh, certain types of things? Sure, just, you know, you get small jobs, you know, they want a few mm -hmm. things there and they have a limited budget usually, you know, depending on who they are. Sometimes they're a startup and they're trying to get started. So I've done a little bit of that kind of stuff. Just, again, being found or just networking people, know people who know people and stuff like that. You know, when you talk about travel photography, that's what you do. Um, you know, me in the wildlife world, it does relate to travel. But one of the things that I found really helpful to get published wherever it is, whether it's in a brochure, a magazine, online, for a story, for your blog, is to shoot in a way where you get in a variety of, of the environment. So, you know, shoot the micro, shoot the macro, shoot everything in between. So, you know, if you're shooting a street mm -hmm. or if you're shooting, you know, a landscape or wildlife, get everything. Get, you know, the animal feeding, mm -hmm. get the the environment that they're in, get it nesting. Whether or not you're displaying this for your friends so that they have a portfolio and you kind of get this depth and you get an understanding of where they're at, whether it's for a magazine. The magazines don't just want a bunch of tight shots or just a bunch of landscapes. They need that diversity and that scene so that people get a feel for what it's about. So that would be my recommendation if people are getting into travel photography. Definitely, definitely want to get a diversity because once you're on location, you've spent the time, the money, whatever yes. it took you to get there, yeah. you might as well get all the angles. If you're doing HDR, if you're doing different kinds of techniques, get it all done right. while you're there. Because yeah. you may not use it all, but if you don't have it, you yeah. might be missing something really important. Exactly. Right, and, and I found uh, just as uh, traveling uh, as an airline pilot that we have layovers in a lot of different cities, and I think it uh, helps to kind of understand, uh, you know, some things about the places that you're going and look for target shots uh, and go out and get them and to be uh, um, flexible. I've, uh, you know, on some of my layovers, gone out uh, very late at night, sometimes at uh, midnight, and uh, taken some interesting shots. I was in uh, Oklahoma City, which doesn't sound terribly exciting right off the... Uh, uh, that, but uh, you know, went downtown and uh, went to the, uh, uh, the the memorial down there, and it was uh, night, and it was raining, and very misty, and it was just me, and it was the security guard, and I had just gotten uh, a brand new tilt shift lens and wanted to try it out and put it on a tripod, and like I said, did the HDR type of stuff right. because you can do it in stable and just. Uh, got some uh, incredible shots. And so I've always found that for me, for uh, personal projects, that I like to get some of the more important aspects in, uh, in certain cities and um, put them together in a uh, portfolio. Yeah. And so I think for me that that's, that's kind of my, my personal goal when I travel. And uh, I've also uh, done a lot of international travel as well to, uh, well, now to about 60 countries or so and uh, um, have uh, um, got some remarkable uh, pictures. Um, now, what do you uh, to do for, um, say, um, like family projects or things like that when you're just out? Um, in shooting the family? Or, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. When, I mean, you're, when you're on a location or something like that. I mean, sure. You know, if I have family, I'm obviously the one that they want to take the pictures and things. But if I can get someone else there, I'm coaching them, you know, mm -hmm. do this and do that to yeah. make sure that they learn a few techniques like not shooting everything center, you know. Right. Going off the side a little bit, you know, getting more of the scene in to tell a story about what the family's near, you know, that, you know, that kind of thing. Put people in an image, put them in for scale, you know, to, to see the size of something. There's a lot of reason to have people in it, not just that you get the family photos to take home with you. So. Right, and it also helps to, uh, when you're traveling, to take pictures in context. If you're in France, you want to have, say, the Eiffel Tower in the background or the Golden Gate Bridge in San right. Francisco or something like that uh, so that you can see it. I mean, if you're taking a picture of a person and it's just up against a brick wall, you don't really get any, you know, idea where the like location is. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, you do want to... Um, kind of keep it, um, you know, so that you can, you know, get some idea of a, a sense of place, I think, more than anything else is really important. Well, thanks. Uh, I think we're about out of time for this particular episode, but thanks for joining us, and we'll be talking about some specific tips for going to these locations in the next episodes. Always define your goals before you get into travel photography because it's going to have a great effect on what, what type of equipment you buy and what places you go to travel. 
And um, I hope you enjoyed our first episode. And again, we were sponsored by uh, the Photographer's Adventure Club. And so uh, like us and subscribe on our channel.